Hi, so this is a menu tutorial <coughs> and here the goal is to not reinvent the wheel. So we will be using the Godot construct. So the first thing we need is a scene and I will create a user interface. So I clicked on user interface and it creates a green dots, a node. The green nodes are the interface related nodes and they are positioned differently from the blue and white nodes. The white nodes have no position, the blue nodes have a 2D position and the green nodes have position based on constraints. And we'll see some of these uh, constraints in the coming uh, minutes. So I need a menu, so I will add first the, the, some constraints. We want the menu to be centered, so we will use a center container, which will center everything that is put into it. And uh, yeah, we want a menu with some uh, text, so we will need to add more stuff. And I will use a grid container, and the grid container will uh, put the control nodes, the child control node in a grid-like uh, fashion, like the icon uh, depicts here. So now I have the grid container and we see that nothing did happen. Only that's cross there and that cross there is the x, y position and uh, it's set by the constraint. And you see that it's on the top left. Why? Because the center container is confined to this small rectangle. So the ensures are all set to zero. And we will change that so it goes full screen. And the screen is delimited by this blue rectangle. So we click on this toolbar. And then we have some anchor presets. Then we are interested in full screen. So not that one, but that one. And you see that now the orange uh, outline takes the full screen. That's what we want. So that's good. For the grid container, we would like to put it uh, also um, full screen, but we can't because, like it says, yeah, the the parent is uh, defining the the position etc of that node, so we are already good. And as you can see, the cross is centered, which is the goal of the center container. It's, it's to center the child, so that's good. Now for the menu, we have active elements and non-active elements. The active elements will be buttons. So we will add a button and you can type button. And you see that it's a green node. So it's a control. And we'll create a simple button which can be clicked. So if we create it, we can see a teeny things. So I use the scroll wheel to zoom. That's our button. Obviously, there is no text or whatever, so it's very small. I could add some text like that and you see that the button did true. Because we want to fake a text uh, menu, we will not put real text there. Now we need a label, so I will add a label. And that will be the label with the, the menu label itself. And for that, yeah, I will let it like that. And the idea would be to put this in front of the label or not, depending on whatever the option is, the currently selected one. So uh, for now, it's a top button, and that's not what we want because what is happening is that our grid has only one column. So if it, there is only one column, everything will be top to bottom. So we need two columns. And now we see that the button stands on the left of the label. Indeed, uh, we have the first column, second column. And if we duplicate the, these two, so I select these two, so I click on the first one, and then I control click the second one, and I will hit control D, and I did duplicate both. And we can see that if I continue to duplicate, I am making new menus entries. But uh, yeah, that uh, button is ugly. Uh, it's not ugly, <laughs> but it's not what we want. 
So we will uh, skin it, and to skin it, we need to create a team. So we can do create new resource, and we can type team. And uh, yeah, we can just double click that, and we name that team as empty team. Looks good because we want no border or whatsoever. And in the bottom, you see that uh, preview and that, that thing that we don't know what it is, but it's where we will uh, set up the team. So we can take the speaker and select the button. And now you see that it's filled with properties. Here, all we will do is create a new style and that style will be empty. Now we can click uh, over normal and pressed and uh, just drag and drop the empty style, style box so just copy paste uh, from one field to another and that's it we are done with our tail and we can save the team so save it's saved now we have to apply it to the buttons so we select the button and we go into the team section and there we have the team and we can drag and drop and we see that the button instantly uh, has the new style. So I can control click to select the other button. Look up for the team things, drag and drop. And I did set the teams for each button. Now uh, we have another property that I will set. is the width of the button, the minimal width. And I will set it. So I, I go to layout and I will set it to 16 pixels. And that allows that if I empty that label, so if I set the text to empty, you see that there is no checking, it doesn't move. It stay like that. And that will be useful uh, for later. Let's save our menu. So I did it Ctrl S and save. So now the menu is saved. If I launch this, yeah, nothing, the menu is not working. And that's expected. So we will make it work and uh, for that we will need a small script on our button. So let's add a button script and I will call it menu button. And in fact this script I can apply to the other button. So I will take the menu button.gd and I can drag and drop it on every button. And now we have to write the script itself. Basically, we can remove all this code and just keep the extend button. Then click on the button, go to node, signal, and uh, yeah. So now we need uh, to connect. So what I will do is uh, focus on turret. So when it has focus. And I can connect. Now, because I did that, you see that it's only connected for that one. So there's not a big issue. We can disconnect and do it properly. That is, okay, it keeps the, I think okay, it's just a bug. So we can control click like we did before. And yeah, we see nothing. Okay, that's not good. So we'll do one by one then uh, why is this uh okay small bug in the thing so double click uh not not toggled but uh, focus on the red and we can say connect there we'll do the same and yeah that's the same script so i will just do this so it's connecting to the same method. Obviously we don't need a different method. And that's it. We have our... Uh, so yeah, that's one way to do it. Of course I could do it another way and we'll do the other way. So instead of uh, connecting each button like I did, 
I could make the button uh, a component with the signal already attached. So another way to do that is to delete this button and just say, okay, this button I want to save as a scene and that would be a menu button. And now I can take this menu button scene and just drag and drop where I need it. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it looks like nothing changed, but you can see that the connection is already made on the script and everything that uh, would change in a button would be reflected in every button. So that's the best way to do that actually. So now let's see that uh, I'm not lying. So I will just add the focus excited and button or exited and then click. Now we have these two methods. And yeah, you can see that if I go back to the menu, this on the right shows that the connection is made. So even if it's just a one button, it's good to make a sign out of it. And uh, now we will just say, okay, so if the focus in on types, then the text is this. Otherwise, the text is this. So now, if I launch the menu, we'll see that it does uh, nothing for now. But now, yeah, if I do up and down, it does that. So we have to remove the default text. And we also have to set the focus to the default option. So for that, I will uh, do the menu uh, script and in that script when the script the node is ready i will grab the focus and put it on button uh, on this button so i can click drag and then and uh, hold control and release and it does that line for me and all i have to do is grab focus so that means that when we load the menu then that button will grab the focus and only that one. And that means that we have this menu and the first button did grab the focus. And now with the arrow keys, I can move and I can do space to or enter to trigger the button. So that's the thing. And yeah, so now we can navigate the menu, but done that way, that means that if I were to change this two to four i have now that menu and as you can see i can navigate left right up down in my menu yeah so that's uh and i didn't add to program this so i just did program the appearance of the other one but the navigation is under by Godot. so that's why it's important to reuse what Godot offers obviously and now let's make a scene uh, to target uh, what the 2d scene we can do a label and uh, yeah, just there i will say okay a child node label center node and we'll add a label and there i can say scene 2 and set the answers like we did before full screen so yeah, the scene 2 is in the middle of the full screen and now i need to trigger uh, this alert. so there we have already a script so we have a bunch of script there and uh, yeah if i do uh, if i change there it would change everywhere because the that's the same script so what we'll do is just connect this button to so the pressed to the control which is the menu itself so that's good 
and I will label this on the turn one first, or I could say, yeah, okay, I will, I will just do that. So I can say on button one pressed, connect. Then I will go to the next and I will say press. And connect on button two, okay. Connect. Poof. And we will do for the three. There is that. Press. Connect. And I will do for the fourth. Press. Connect. And now I have each button, and let's say only the number three will uh, trigger the seal change. So we'll get the three, and we'll change send to file. That would work, and we'll do send to. Yeah. So this this way to changing is a bit slower, but here we don't really care, so we don't preload it. And because yeah, it's only when it will meet that, that it will uh, start loading the file. So we will have a bit of freeze, obviously. With the preloading, the scene is already ready to be moved on. Okay. So I will launch this. And now I am, yeah, okay. Yeah, so one, two, three. So that would be the three. So if I do space, nothing happens. But if I do space here, I'm teleported to send two, and as you can see, I didn't uh, had to implement anything uh, very difficult. I mean, I just clicked on various interface stuff, and the most difficult part was that. Yeah, that was quite difficult. And then, uh, yeah, the other things that you have to think about is uh, in your uh, menu button. I will go into here. To set in the layout the minimum of 16 pixels or whatever value suite your design because if i didn't set that let's not set it and let's see what it what happens and you can see that now the menu is uh, li like moving uh, yeah that's ugly uh, and so you see uh, the the left uh, column is just dancing and that's why you just fix that by saying, okay, then, ah. okay, ah, uh, that's, that's things that happens. Oh, nice. Okay. I will force it because there is no reason uh, for that lockup and I will launch it back. So. Ah, that's uh okay so that concludes then the tutorial that means